Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show off my costume because you can't see all of it. So you can see the badge. All right, so guard hat, which I made. I sewed on each one of the letters, so they're a little wonky, but that's okay. Um, so then I got a badge that says security, and then um, Fred uh, Fazbear Entertainment. Um, you can see a close-up picture on Twitter. I'm not going to rip it off my shirt trying to do it. But Cheek is on the top, and Freddy's in the middle. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with it. And then on this side, I got my little security badge. It says Mike Schmidt, who is the very first uh, night security guard. Is this how you spell guard? Now I'm like double, I'm concerned that I spelled guard wrong. Yeah, guard. That's the right word. To keep, yeah, that's the right word. Don't, don't do that to me, Skio. Don't do that to me. So no glasses today because if you notice, I even did my eye makeup so it looks like I'm tired because hello, night guard in a, in a hellish family restaurant. Wait, Fazbear's is doing remote employment <laughs> for security now? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So yeah, uh, we're going to talk the Five Nights at Freddy's lore because if you guys don't know the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, it is like mind-blowing how crazy in-depth this is. Disclaimer, there is a lot of different theories out there of the sequence of the games, um, the sequence of the events. Um, there's books out there now that actually contradict the game. Um, but I'm going to be focusing on game lore because that's what I, I know most about. Um, so let's do this, guys. Let's, let's get into the game. No more stalling. Let's do this. Um, I don't think there's any settings in this game, to be honest, so I can't turn it down for me, which sucks, because you know I would have, like, the audio as, as low as fucking possible if I could. Alright, guys, so we are gonna listen to all the phone guys' messages. Um, I will cry on, on day four, um, and we'll talk about lore. So, I'll be going through the story of Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, talking about, um, where this game falls on the timeline. I am totally open to people disagreeing with me. I would love nothing more than people that know the lore in chat to tell me that I'm wrong. Because I know a lot of the different theories. I'm going with the one that I like. Um, so we're going to go through the story as well. If you disagree, that is perfectly okay. The only thing that I ask is that you're respectful to the person that you disagree with. Whether it's me, someone in chat whatever just be um be respectful to the person you disagree with because to the best of my knowledge the um person who wrote all the books and made the move uh made the games um all of the games had a hand in them has not confirmed a timeline he prefers people to kind of create their own he's confirmed certain things that have that are key points that we will go over but to the best of my knowledge he has not confirmed an actual timeline there's plenty of YouTubers out there that have put things together, and I've watched a bunch of them. So, um, let's do it. All right. Family Pizzeria looking for security guard uh, to work the night shift 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Monitor cameras, ensure safety of equipment and animatronic characters not responsible for injury. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Aquarius? There is no pause in this game, so if I miss something, I promise I'll get back to it. Oh, I, I don't even remember how to use this anymore. Okay. okay. We're just we're just double checking, guys. We don't have much to worry about, honestly. Hello. Uh, I wanted to record a message for you to help you get settled in on your first night. How are you doing? Great uh, so far. Finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. So poor phone guy. Be a bit overwhelming, but I can tell you, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll be fine. So let's just focus on getting. You it's started. so loud in my ears. It's okay. not good. <laughs> uh, let's see. First, there's an introductory greeting from the company that I'm supposed to read. Everybody's still on and the stage. It's kind of a legal thing, you know. Um, welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. A magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovering the damage or death of the bird, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced. Doing way more better. That's what I like to hear, Aquarius. Now, that might sound bad, I know, but there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. 
If I were forced to the music starting already, I can hear it. Songs for 20 years, and I never got a bath, I'd probably be a bit irritable at night, too. So remember, these characters hold a special place in the hearts of children, and we need to show them a little respect. Right? Okay. Right? So just okay. So be aware, the characters do tend to wander a bit. Uh, they're left in some kind of free roaming mode at night. Uh, something about their servos locking up, they get turned off for too long. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too. But then there was the bite of 87. We'll get into the bite of 87. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe. Hold D and C and uh, press plus on your keyboard. I don't know what that does, but I don't think I'm going to do it. But hi, JD. How you doing? Characters, if they happen to see you after hours, probably won't recognize you as a person. They'll most likely see you as a metal endoskeleton without its costume on. Now, since that's against the rules here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, They'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. Sweet. Um, now, that wouldn't be so bad if the suits themselves weren't filled with cross beams, wires, and animatronic devices, especially around the facial area. So you can imagine how having your head forcefully pressed inside one of those could cause a bit of discomfort and death. And death. Uh, the only parts of you that would likely see the light of day again would be your eyeballs and teeth pop out the front of the mask. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you these things when you sign up. But hey, first station the Abris. I'm good, we'll JD. Tomorrow. <laughs> uh, check those cameras and remember to close the doors only if absolutely necessary. Gotta conserve power. Alright, good night. I just wanna turn this freaking fan off. Cause that's what's killing my my Oh fuck! Alright, Bonnie's on the move. Okay. We gotta start checking our, our lights. All right, so the idea is that you're supposed to track them with the camera. So he is usually on the left side. All right, so let's talk lore here. That's the whole conversation I want to have today is lore. So the idea of what this game, what happens with this game, um, is in this particular game you'll actually see on some of the cameras there'll be like little newspaper clippings um like the signs will actually change to newspaper clippings um and it shows the story of a mascot i forgot to check the light um it shows the story of a mascot um uh, that there was a suit that somebody got into and basically he lured kids away from their parents at birthday parties and um, killed them. And then stuffed their bodies inside the animatronic suits. So you'll actually see, like, people start to notice not only that the kids are gone, but that the suits start to smell and they start to ooze, like, bodily fluids and such. Um, and it gets a little nasty. So this is the game, this is the first game, and you can tell that at this point, I think Scott had an idea of what he wanted to do with the games. But um, I don't think he quite knew exactly how he wanted to do it or what he ultimately wanted the story to be about because the story changes so much. That's disgusting. Basti, it gets worse. So that's the first game. It was founded in 1983 and Phone Guy says that it's been 20 years, so 2003. That's true, JD. But I'm wondering if the characters have been um, around for longer so yeah, it could be 2003. The why I, why I think it's in the 90s is somebody actually broke down the calendar and saw that there was a, a week. Ah, oh, fuck! Alrighty. Uh, saw that there was a week in the 90s that actually ended in Friday, on a Friday. But that doesn't mean that this is an alternate reality with alternate timeline. So it very well could have been 2003. Do you know the protagonist? Uh, which one? Who I am right now, there's a couple of different theories, and I disagree with some commonly thought um, theories that this is Michael Afton that I'm playing right now, because I don't think that it is. Um, I think that it's um, just some guy named Mike Schmidt, in my opinion. So have you checked the lore lately, Six? And the reason I ask that is because um, the lore has gotten drastically has gotten drastically um, more in-depth. 
I absolutely am obsessed with the lore because it's gone from just, hey, a guy killing a bunch of kids to, hey, a guy killing a bunch of kids and then realizing that there's some dark fucking energy behind it that can make you immortal. And his obsession to then turn it... That was easy as fuck. Um, it turned from... I'm shouting because it's so loud in my ears. Uh, there are only two night guards, Michael Afton, FNAF, FNAF 1, and some people say Michael is Fritz. See, I don't agree with that, JD. I don't agree with that. I, I hear that people think that this is Michael Afton, and I guess it could be. It could definitely be Michael Afton, but, like, think about it from a video game developer's perspective. Like, he could have gone in and fixed the last name to Michael Afton if he wanted it to be a thing. You know what I mean? But he didn't go back in and fix it to make it lore perfect, so I don't know, or lore specific, so I don't know if it is Michael Afton. I haven't gotten any clues that would say it's Michael Afton, for me anyway, looking at the games from what I've looked at. But I just think it's fascinating that the story went from, like, okay, a serial killer did this, to, okay, a serial killer did this, oh, and by the way, like, it was the guy who started it, Here's proof uh, in Five Minute uh, Freddy's 1, Michael gets fired for tampering with animatronics and body odor because he was scooped out, he was a walking corpse, and Fritz gets fired for the same reason. Okay, I could see that. Ah, oh, fucking A, stop it! Um, I could see that. Annie, thank you so much for that uh, follow. Welcome on into the Nerd Herder. You're now officially a Nerd Herder. Thank you so much for being here. So the reason I could, that's a pretty interesting statement, JD. I, I like that thought, but I still think that, I think it was more of a joke or possibly he stunk because he was scared shitless every night. Like it's very likely that he was scared and was sweating profusely um, every night because of everything that was going on, especially the sixth night, he would be quite sweaty after everything that he experienced. So, just because he smells doesn't mean that he's a corpse, necessarily. Um, Scott Cawthon is really good with the lore and the story he gives. Uh, gives us answers to some questions, but it raises a lot more. Yeah, and that's what I love about the lore six. Um, I like that he doesn't answer it. And then, when the books came out, there was a lot of people that were, like, trying to shove the book's lore into, um into the um the existing thing you know what i mean uh the existing lore of the games and what is kind of interesting about the lore is that you really don't need to necessarily they don't need to mesh they can be two different things you know what i mean a lot of people tried show it, shoving the books into the game or tried to keep them apart um i think that they are in the same universe yes but not at the same time period. Or that they just give you themes. Like, there's certain things that happened in the book that you could see in the game. You know what I mean? Game theorists, I think. Yeah, I think you're right, Six. We finally know the crying child's name. Um, what's the crying child's name, JD? I know Cassidy is... is So, one of the theories is that there's two ghosts in, uh, in Golden Freddy. Which means there's two... Oh, fuck! I wasn't even looking, I was looking at chat. Evan? Oh, his name's Evan. JD, what page of the book was that on? I'm curious. Oh, come on, Chuck Chica! Okay, woo! Uh, Cece and Cassie are supposedly inside uh, Golden Freddy and Michael is the night guard. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about M Michael Afton being the first game's night guard. I don't think Scott really had the story fleshed out at this point. He was really more focused on um, on the gameplay. I don't think he really had the story yet. We solved it like we solved the Cassidy's name. Yeah, that was really cool. That was really cool, JD. Uh, which is why Golden says, it's me, it's me. Yeah, I, I thought that the, the survival book thing, whatever, was genius. Um, like putting those little breadcrumbs for kid for people to follow and like the hidden messages it was just phenomenal I thought it was amazing I thought they did he oh fuck body now 
Oh god, I missed click the button. Fucking Bonnie, man. He is just all over me. Alright, I hear the singing. The singing is... Isn't the singing Foxy, though? I heard the singing is actually Foxy. I thought the singing was Bonnie. But it turns out that the singing's probably Foxy. I don't remember dates. I don't really understand how Michael Afton would be in FNAF 2 since the bite of Mangle or whatever. Um... It's Evan, it's me, I'm here, uh, to Michael. Yeah, I can, I can understand why he's saying it's me to Michael. Um, so, I, so what do you guys think the timeline is? Let's talk about timeline for a second. The singing is Foxy. See, I always thought it was Bonnie, because I always heard it, like, early on. So, alright, so what do you guys think the timeline is? Okay? I'm curious about people's thoughts on the timeline. I think... It goes Five Nights at Freddy's 4, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Sister Location, and then um, 3, and then the rest of the games. The timeline in FNAF is everywhere, and I really like until we have all the questions answered, we don't have a proper timeline. I still think if, if, if Five Nights, or if uh, 2 ends... With the bite of 87, it would have to be before this game. Probably 1987. Um, FNAF 1 is 2003. FNAF 3 is 30 years after. FNAF thir uh, 2033. 6, probably the same year. Uh, we don't know. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Ah, they're already moving! They're already moving, guys. Ah, Chica's already on the move. I gotta start checking both cameras now. Hello, hello. Hey, you're doing great. Uh, most people don't last this long. I mean, you know. Can I DM you something in the game, theorist Lori? Absolutely. Yeah. You absolutely can. It's long. You better believe you can, Courier. I love, I love talking lore for this game. I am obsessed with the lore. What about Pizzeria Sim? That's um after three. So the Pizzeria Sim actually adds, the Sim is the ending, yes. Yes, it is. And honestly, it would have been such a satisfying ending if it was actually the ending. It would have been so satisfying if that was the ending, but it, it's it's not. The Lauren FNAF is amazing, but you find a lot of people talking about it anymore. I think you're going to see a lot more Six because the new game's coming out this year. The new game is actually coming out in May, I believe. Um, and the new game is set after um, Pizza Sim. Um, it's after the VR game, which also adds a ton of lore to the game. Um, I just love that every single one of the games adds so much to the lore. Wait, so if uh, Golden Freddy, aka Evan, is talking to me, is talking to Michael, that means he knows it's him. So is he trying to kill... Uh, does he hate him? I mean, would it if if that's true, JD? And I'm not saying that um, that's part of my theory because I don't know if I if I agree with it or not. But if that is true, wouldn't you want to shove him into a suit? Wouldn't you absolutely 100% want to shove him into a suit? What's up, Pi? Good to see ya. I hope that fandom was once really big and then it kind of died out. So the thing with the fandom though is I heard it got really toxic. Can I order a pizza? Not right now, you can't. I'm trying to stop animatronics from killing me right now. Even if William is in hell, uh, so he does always come back. Yeah, exactly, JD. That's what I love about um, how... Oh, fuck. Oh, no, I wasn't checking Freddy, no! Okay, I'm dead. I wasn't checking Freddy. I forgot to check the cameras! I'm dead. All right, so we got one laugh out of Freddy. Oh, fuck my life. Okay. This is not good, guys. I stopped checking the stage. What about BBs? You mean Balloon Boy? Um, I don't really know a ton about Balloon Boy's uh, lore. If anybody knows about Balloon Boy's lore, let me know. Fucking Freddy's moving, man. This is not good. Oh, fuck! Stop it! Stop with that shit! Maybe Michael... Uh, was bullying Evan because William loved Elizabeth and Evan more. 
That's very, very true, JD. That could very well be the case. Um, I am gonna die. But dying in games is not is still bad. It is, because I'll be shoved into a goddamn suit if I get if I get killed. This is not good, guys. Alright, so Freddy's still not here, but that doesn't mean he ain't gonna surprise me. Oh my god! Freak it out, man! I'm freaking out! Ah, oh, fuck, there's Chica. Will Freddy and Chica appear on the same cam, I wonder? Oh god, I don't like this. I don't like this, guys. He is fucking close, man. Ah, fuck you! <laughs> fucking Chica, man. Fuck you, Chica. Fucking A. How am I doing with power? I don't even know. I can't do math right now. Get out of there, Chica! Stop hanging out there! Stop hanging out! You're draining all my power! Oh, I tricked the wrong camera! Fuck! Okay. Okay, I think we're okay. He might be back on stage now. Find out. He is not back on stage. Ah! Okay. Okay. Alright, we're at 5 a.m., guys. We might still be able to do this. Might still be able to do this. I kind of just want to shut the door until 5 a.m. This fucking Freddy is already on the move. I thought he didn't move until night four, so that was my fault for not checking the way I should have. I have a lot of power left, so I'm not super concerned about it. Okay, okay, this is not good. Ooh, this is not good. I got a little nervous on my power supply. I might have overestimated myself. <laughs> Cove, I know, I'm checking, I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm, I'm keeping that door closed until I have to open it, which is starting to look like now. I thought, why is fi why is 5 a.m. so fucking long? Why are you so- Oh, God! Why did it take so long? Um, and you prevent them from killing you. Yeah, that's- that, Yeah, I can't do that. In Five Nights for Night Marionette is not canon. Yes. Um... That is true. I don't know why BB is, though. I can't remember. I did read somewhere why BB was. If anybody knows, let me know. But I do remember somebody explained why BB was. All right, we're going to listen. Um, in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Phone Guy says, Welcome to your summer job. Um, oh fuck. Um, in November, says, When place closes and reopens, he takes the night shift and that's you. Um, that'd be kind of cool. Um, but wouldn't it be like 20 years difference between Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and Five Nights at Freddy's 1? I'm going, Nick. I'm going, buddy. I appreciate your, uh, I know F phone guy. Poor phone guy. F's in chat for phone guy. Shit, we got Bonnie. Okay. Okay. All right, we got to keep checking on. You stay right there, Freddy Fazbear, all right? I'm keeping my eye on you, bitch. My eye on you this time. Oh, I left the light on. Like a dumbass. From phone guy's calls was signaling... Uh, to look in the suit for his body. I know. I was so sad the first time I, I heard that. When he goes, yeah, go check the suits in the back room for me. I was like, please don't say that. Poor guy. Oh, my God. So, phone guy is Jeremy. And maybe Five Nights at Freddy green Jeremy is a different Jeremy. I mean, that might work. If it was Jeremy, that might be a thing. But, um... I would be very sad if it was Jeremy, to be honest. 
Uh, yes, actually, JD, um, in, in the, in the VR game, um, I think that's, that's the same Jeremy. I think they, they clarified that that was the same Jeremy. Or at least somebody did. Somebody P said it was just the same Jeremy. The thing, so here's what I like and hate about Scott. He uses names that are very common, right? He uses names that are like Jeremy and Mike and William. It's like all names that like, you could say, okay, they're the same person because it's the same first name, but it could be somebody totally different because that is like the most common name ever. He would be like 50. That doesn't, I mean, that's still, he could still be there, you know what I mean? Just because he would be old doesn't mean he couldn't do a VR tester job. Fuck you, buddy! Oh, fucking A. Ah, shit. Ah, shit. Okay, check the cove. Oh, fucking Foxy's moving. You stay right there, Foxy, you little bitch. Um, I will catch up in chat as soon as I get a second, guys. This is getting a little sweaty now. We're getting a little sweaty. And, uh, I'm getting a little nervous. I'm not gonna be- a, I'm not gonna be stuffed in a suit like Phone Guy, alright? We're not doing it. I've thrown off- <laughs> yeah. You've thrown off the, J the Nerdy Jane's groove. Okay. Alright, we're okay. We're okay. This is fine. Okay, we're doing okay. My power is not good, though, guys. I am- I am not doing good power-wise. I mean, I'm not doing terrible power-wise, but I'm not doing good power-wise, either. Right do I gotta keep checking for Chica? But I don't think- Oh, fuck! Foxy is on the move! Stay there, Foxy, you bitch. Ah, shit. Oh, I'm gonna die from Foxy. Foxy, you stay there, you little bee. You stay right there. Stay right there, alright? Stay right- Fuck, I changed the wrong camera! Ah, fuck! Fuck, close the door! Okay, okay. Okay, we're okay. We got this. Guys, guys. We got this. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone because I don't think Chica's gonna be coming at me. Hot seconds here. Shit, 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 shit! Oh my god. Oh my god, we got it! <laughs>
All right, let me catch up with the lore chat now that I'm stuffed in a bear suit. Like, like my eyes there. My eyes. All right, let me take these out because it sounds really... Okay, so let's go back here. All right. So, uh, phone guy is Jeremy, and maybe an F green Jerry Jeremy is a different Jeremy. I think Jeremy is in um, VR. Yes. I believe that that connection was, was made. There's like three fucking Jeremys, right? But they could all be the same. The, the games do span a couple of decades, but they don't span like a hundred years. So they could all be the same thing. So isn't anybody going to ask why Michael is a walking grape? Like, why is he purple? Uh, shouldn't he be greenish? So um, here's a thing about why I don't think... Another reason why I don't think Michael Afton is Michael Schmidt um, and... Is it Michael Schmidt? Um, because, yeah, he's purple. He was purple, like, a while ago. You know what I mean? Um, I do like... Do you guys think that... Um, Michael Afton is the security guard in Pizza Simulator. The, the, the security guard in the Pizza Simulator was Michael Afton because Henry Emily says, I don't think you want to leave either. Meaning, I know that, I know what you are, and I'm pretty sure that you just want to end this all too. Um, which is a very powerful kind of ending, which would have been the perfect ending if they didn't continue with Glitch Trap, but... I think that they still made a very powerful ending and allowed for um, for Wiggle Room where they could continue the story with Glitch Trap, uh, which is pretty awesome. Whenever I'm scared in Final Fantasy 1, I, I press Freddy's nose on the poster. <laughs> That's awesome. Super Horror Bro says that there will be two sides, two good and two evil. Yeah, I, I, I watched that video recently, JD. Yeah, I watched his, his video and I think that would be awesome. But it makes me, I was really excited about Montgomery Gator, and it makes me not want to play the game or like Montgomery G Gator. There's no way that's not Michael. If Mike is not the guard in Finite at phrase 6, then Henry murdered a guy who didn't want to die. That's true, JD. Um, but I thought that that was a really, really cool, cool ending. I like that. Um, oh, I have another theory. Mike is the security guard from FNAF 2 since... In the your fired screen, it says you're fired for tampering with the robots and odor. Yeah, that uh, JD mentioned that too. Um, it would make him smell, but people would smell if they had to deal with five nights of pure torture and pure hell, right? So, like, think about being there with your little thing, all this shit's flying at you. You're randomly pre pressing buttons and turning on lights and putting on masks and all this shit. And your your adrenaline is through the roof. You'd smell too on the fifth day. So um, I think that I think he put uh, due to tampering with the machines because they moved around and the owner thought or um, Henry or whoever owns this establishment thought, hey, he's tampering with it and smell because he was overexerting himself and the adrenaline was too high. Um, so he smelled, and I think it was more of a joke, and then he continued that joke into game two, and then we continue into the rest of the games. I don't take the smell thing as a, oh, he's a corpse. Um, I, I think that it would be very hard for him to live a normal life or continue to go to jobs and stuff. So I, I think that he, he took the sister location, he died, had it entered in him, and then he continued to live on in his corpsey shell. And then... Um, didn't want to live anymore and Henry Emily kind of enticed him to come um, with this new thing um, one theme from the book that um, Matt Pat said is that like people are drawn to Five Nights at Freddy's for some reason certain people are drawn to it and I like that concept some people say William killed because he was sad that Evan died and he was jealous of Henry so he killed Charlotte see I think I think, yes, I agree with the Evan part. I think he killed Charlotte because um, he was mad at Henry. I think Henry was the original one to create the, fa the Fazbear crew and the animatronics. That's my opinion. I think Henry was the, was the person behind the machines. And I think William Afton helped with the Springtrap um, versions. But I think that William blamed Henry for... Um, Evan, which I didn't know his name was, but that's cool. Uh, Evan's death. Um, but what doesn't, what I don't understand is that um, I don't think Charlotte was the first one dead because in Ultimate Nights, 
uh, Chica says that she was the first one, which means she was Susie. Um, so, like, what caused him to start his rampage is kind of where it's gonna, gonna look into, so. All right, guys, let's try to finish this game. All right, whew! Now that we're all caught up with our conversations. Who else was... Uh, disappointed about the FNAF RTX trailer? I don't... Oh! Why were you disappointed in it, JD? What made you disappointed in the RTX trailer? I know a lot of people... Why is Foxy moving so quickly? Foxy, get back in your hole, dude! Get back in your hole! Get back... Get back in your hole, okay? You fabulous son of a bitch, Fox! Get back in your hole! When he looks like this, when he's, like, leaned to the side, I think he looks like he's about to just jet and run. Um, and I think he looks fabulous. Like, I could just imagine him, like, pointing his toe out to the side before he runs. Like, Bugs Bunny in, like, an exaggerated fashion. Ready? No. No! You don't look at my camera, alright? Ah, fuck! Okay. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me! You get so, like, used to just pressing the lights that, like, you don't think about that they're actually gonna be there. You're just thinking you're strat. So, like, I didn't- I never expect them to actually be there. Alright. Foxy's just sitting there being a good boy. Sit there, Foxy. I am ter- this game terrifies me. Like, this game scares the living bejesus out of me. But, um... Like, I am afraid to play the other games. That's how scared I am of this game series. But I will a thousand percent uh, be playing, or, okay. I am 99% sure I'll be playing uh, Security Breach. I don't know if I'll be playing uh, playing it or watching other people play it. That's my 1% that I might not do it. <laughs> I like to give myself an out with this game series. <laughs> Just gotta keep, we gotta keep Freddy on that stage. We gotta make sure... Ah, no! Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, babe. Um... Ah, oh, fuck. Ah! I missed it again, you fuck, Bonnie. All right, I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. There he is. I was just waiting for him. I was gonna see if we can maybe, maybe make it to the end, but it's not gonna happen. Holy... That, like, screech is so loud, though. Only FNAF 1 and FNAF 6 are scary, scary. Is that what you think? Is that, is that your... I, I don't know. I don't know, Dreams. Um, FNAF 2 kind of freaks me out because of all the sounds and having to wind the box. Um, and then 3 freaks me out because of the demonic eyes that just stare at you. Um, and 6, definitely. A thousand percent 6 is scary because, like, you have to, like... Here's the bot... And you have to, like, check things off and, like, look at them and salvage them and... Mm, nope. Nope! Don't want to do it. Uh, FNAF 1 is the scariest, not because of looks, because of audio. Scott did a really good job with the audio. I can agree with that. Oh, but FNAF 4 is just hell and terror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so they freak me out. Yeah. So, okay, we're, we're gonna beat this. Fucking Bonnie got me both times. <sighs> Alright, so here's another lore question for you lore fans like me. And yes, oh my god, my camera's already out. Here's a lore question for my, my fans here, or my, uh, my lore fans here. So, do you think, um, that William Afton was alive after the Springtrap suit incident? incident. Do you think he was alive after the spring trap, um, the spring trap incident? Because a lot of people thought that he was alive and that maybe Michael Afton was feeding him, like, through a little hole or something. You think he was alive? You think he was alive walled up inside of a restaurant for 30 years, inside of a death trap? I want to, I want to know your understanding. Please share with me. Because I've heard a lot of people say that he was, and I don't understand how that's possible. So I want I want to learn. Shit, I gotta get better at turning that fucking light on. Ah! Jesus Christ, Chica! Fuck you! Oh, God. Okay. Well, I'm guessing the spring locks don't pierce through. Okay. 
stab, 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 though. So, Dad, I want you to Google something. There is a, apparently, a description of what happens when the spring locks fail and what the person goes through. Written and possibly voiced, in, in one case, by William Afton in one of the videos that I watched. It is horrific, and there is no way a person can survive. Now, that doesn't mean his body isn't in there, and that doesn't mean that he's not haunting the body like the rest of the kids, but the description is horrific. Like, wires pop through your body and your mouth and go through your eyeballs, and it is just horrifying to think about. I think it's very fitting for William Afton to have gone through that, but I don't think he's alive after that description. I don't think he's alive. You don't either, Roro? Yeah, I, I have a hard time believing that anybody would survive that. Also, whoever voiced that is, is like, I don't know which video it was, but it was, like, my favorite voice acting. It was terrifying, but awesome. Uh, oh, wait until you hear the fan-made audio of his death. What? I need to, I need to hear this. The shit scared the fuck out of me. Where where can I find this? Dreams dad. Shoot me a DM and tell me where I can find this. Mainly because not that I have a sick pleasure and I want to hear it. I just didn't know that somebody made it. Um oh, you're talking of him screaming? Yeah, maybe I don't want to hear that. Maybe I don't want to hear him screaming. Um The description of what happened, the only reason, like I found it fascinating as part of the video and part of a book that, you know, William Afton would have given to his employees is that he really deserved it. Like, first of all, I think he's the one that made the spring trap me mechanism. So he was the one responsible for teaching people how to use the spring trap machines or the spring trap costumes and how to not die, so to speak, in them. Um, and the way that somebody voiced the reading, and again, I don't know if it was like the voice actor for William Afton or not, but like he got some glee out of the idea that if something went wrong, that suit was definitely your tomb. Um, fuck, turn off. So um, for him to like get that, that just dessert at the end of everything with the kids' souls all around him, yes, yes. I always come back. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a spooky dude, man. Um, but I love, I love the characters. I love the story. Um, not that I like, you know, kids getting hurt. Like, that really, really bothered me the first time I, I learned the lore of this game. I think William is barely alive, but he is also, like, Voldemort. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Dreams. I love it. Um, I love that you made that connection because that's exactly how I thought. If... <laughs> Thanks, John. Um... If anyone would be able to survive the spring trap, it's definitely William Afton, right? Uh, you know the father is me, Michael. Um, I saw an art of Michael saying that on a phone box shortly after Mr. Location. I didn't check the code. I did not see that. Um, I know that, that Afton's catchphrase is, I always come back. And he does. He comes back as Glitch Trap. And can we just stop and appreciate the genius of Glitch Trap to continue the story? Because technically, he could still be burning in hell in Custom Night, and a copy of his soul could have been imprinted on Glitch Trap. So we could still have the ultimate ending of um, Pizza Simulator and still get to enjoy the creepiness that is Glitch Trap. Like, that is just fucking genius, if you ask me. I loved that. I'm gonna die. We're not gonna make it. I'm gonna run out of power. That's if nobody attacks me from here until then. If Foxy gets out, I'm fucked. If Foxy gets out, I am a thousand percent dead. And I didn't check. Up! Ah! Oh, that was close. Fucking Bonnie almost got me again, guys. The Bonmeister almost got me again. This is gonna be close, guys. This is gonna be real close. I'm gonna try to keep them on the stage, but I can't check the lights. Fuck Bonnie and Chica, right? And hey, they scare the shit out of me every time. All right, I this is it. 
This is this is it. We're gonna get lucky or we're gonna lose. This is it. This is it, guys. No, it's okay, I agree with that. <laughs> Worship and prayers. Okay. Yes! Yes, we got it! Yeah! yeah! We did it! We made our $120! Let's go! Oh my god. See you next week. Good job, sport. Oh my god. 120. Gonna get that overtime. Gonna get that overtime. I'm so excited right now. I know you've been torturing yourself to beat this game, so here's a follow. Ace, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate it, man. Woo! Got it. Well, uh, you could not check on Foxy and listen for his footsteps. No, I gotta check that. I gotta check him. Uh, I don't really understand why Scrap Baby and FNAF 6 is helping Afton like she has the worst fucking father. So I think that she has always talked positive about her father. So going back to, um, to Scrap Baby, I think she's just as twisted. So here's my story. I think that William Afton first realized about Revenant, the power that brings people back. He first learned Remnant because of um, his his daughter. And that's something that Matt Pat says, I think, in one of his videos. That he moved Circus Baby to the basement and realized that his daughter's soul was still in there. And I think that's what triggers him to want to keep experimenting. And I think that's why I think Circus Baby's pizzeria opened before... The second location, the junior's location from FNAF 2. I think it opened, it closed day one because the kid was killed. He realizes that, holy shit, there's a soul inside here. I need to know more. He goes to juniors dressed like a security guard and starts killing kids and juniors to learn more about Remnant. What if, what if his son Evan didn't die? Here's my thing. So Evan gets bit in, in 83. What if he gets stuck in a coma and doesn't die? And Afton, William Afton sees Remnant as a way to bring his son back from the dead. So that's, in his mind, that's why he starts to work with Remnant and killing more kids to get to understand Remnant better to bring his own son back. At some point it twists his mind and he wants to become immortal and become the asshole that he is. But I like to, I, I kind of like the idea of maybe he was doing it to save his son from the coma. And then his son ends up dying in the coma. I don't know. It's something that thought that I thought about. The reason I think Michael says the father, it's me, Michael. I did it, blah 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 line on the phone because he because why would he say I'm going to come find you when he knows he is inside the horror attraction that he buried that he burned down? So I think that Henry burned it down. I think Matt Pat also said that Henry probably burned the fright attraction down because remember the the fright attraction never opened and if henry knew that he, that um william was walled because somebody walled william up into the building and matt pat did uh made the point of it was probably henry emily because he knows that william's a monster saw went in saw mon uh saw william's body in spring trap and walled it up i like that idea um and i think that if that was the case and he caught wind of it before it opened, he would want to burn that shit down. Maybe he tried legally to have them stop working on it, but um, there would be no reason why Emily wouldn't want to burn it down. Um, does Scrap Baby even know that? Um, maybe. Did Baby, aka Elizabeth, even know that FNAF sister location in 6 FNAF Nightgar was her fucking brother? I, yes. I think in sister location, she absolutely did. I'm I'm almost positive that she did. At least a part of her did. Uh, he goes back to rip them apart, uh, killing himself in the process. Yeah. All right. Should we try? Let's try night six. Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> let's try night six. <clears throat> let's get that fifty cents, guys. Let's get that that overtime. Press the nose. All right, Bonnie's already moving. How fast do they get here, though? I'm I'm a little concerned how fast they get here. Oh, 
Oh my god, he's already in here. <laughs> well, that was quick. He's already in here, guys. God damn. The nose of protection. He got in there so fast. Didn't Henry kill himself? Not that I know of. I mean, how would Henry have killed himself if he definitely created the Pizza Sim in 6? And if 3 happened before 6, which I it did because William Afton dies in 6, if Hen Henry Emily definitely made the um, the simulation for, for FNAF 6, there's no, there is definitely a possibility and maybe a very strong possibility and it would make sense for Henry to burn down the, um, to burn down the, the pizzeria in three. Henry spread the rumor to throw William off. To throw William off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, you mean in, in the pizza simulator, Cam? The, oh, spread the rumor to throw William off of his death. Interesting. Cam, elaborate. I'm, I'm fast, I'm interested. Elaborate, please. How have we not talked about FNAF lore together? No, but he saw him in person killing himself. But you can fake that if Cam is what if if what Cam is saying is true, you could definitely fake your own death. I mean, we see it in movies and, you know, books all the time and since yes, it's those aren't real life examples. I mean, neither is a video game based on animatronics that try to stuff you into a All right, guys, let's try 6 again. Let's try 6 again. Uh, what do you mean the technicians? Why am I checking the light? Nobody's off the stage yet. Ugh. I keep missing the light switch, guys. It's not good. Ah! Ah! Okay. Woo! Okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. This is fine. This is fine. I know Chica's still- Oh, Chica's not there. Okay. God. Oh, God. Ah! Get away! Okay, so there is no downtime. Huh? There is just no downtime. I pressed the wrong one. Fuck, I messed up my, my rhythm. Fuck, get away from me, Chica. I didn't check. I didn't check for Bonnie in a hot second. G is just all over my ass tonight. If this is a guy named Michael Schmidt. Fuck, Chica. God damn it. We'll just let Foxy come eat me. Um, like if, uh, FNAF 6, the two techs, uh, commit game over. I don't know what you mean. I'm just letting Foxy come ki kill me, because I can't. Chica's in here just waiting for me to lift it, so. We'll just wait for Foxy to come. There he is. Um, we saw a story being told in FNAF World. Uh, it wasn't real. From Scott. Racked with grief, Henry considered suicide until he realized that he must right Afton's wrong before dying. Interesting. So then he he could have killed himself after six, then, right? If he because he would think that Afton's dead, even though Afton is now glitch trapped. Even though Afton could still be burning in hell, and just a copy of his soul was imprinted onto the glitch trap, which is what I think happened. Because I like the idea of of Afton being. In, in, in at least a certain way. Uh, there is a seventh knight, I think, and the name is Five Knights, Not Seven Knights at Freddy. <laughs> That's probably true. Uh, they didn't kick themselves. Uh, it was Valora, not Foxy, among them? Huh. Yeah, I don't know about that story. Um, fill me in on the deets, guys. What's What about that story? Let me explain. In Five, Night, in Five Nights at Freddy 5, sorry, not 6, two technicians commit game over when you look at the likes. Interesting. You know, I saw a breakdown of the VR game, and Glitch Trap scared the ever-living shit out of me. Okay? So, um, I, like, had nightmares of Glitch Trap that night when I first saw him. Um... Interesting. I'll have to look into that. I heard that there was a, a free roam open RPG for um, Five Nights at Freddy's. That, that's the Five Nights at Freddy's world, I think, that some people were mentioning. And I would like to try that. There's a couple of spin-offs. So, guys, here's another question. While I'm getting back into 
to night six. I'll give night six one more shot. Um, because we got to 2 a.m., which is better than I thought I would get. Um, have you guys played any spin-off games? And if so, which spin-off games have you played and which ones are pretty good? I know that there's one where you play a spring trap and you have to break down all of the um, the animatronics. I saw a couple that like one of them really seemed interesting. It was called The Joy of Creation, I think. And it was um a story about Scott Cawthon and like he meets William Afton and all this stuff. Like The Joy of Creation is one of the scare I want to I want to Definitely. Uh, I saw... You saw FNAF Plus. I did see FNAF Plus. Um, but I would rather play the original, I think. Joy of Creation. I want to see... I want to watch somebody play Joy of Creation so bad. I think it was called Afton's Revenge, JD. I don't think it was Springtrap's Revenge. I think it was Afton's Revenge. I did see Five Nights at Candy. That's another one. Um, I haven't played it yet. But I want to watch somebody play Joy of Creation. I think that's fascinating. That somebody made a game about the creator... And because um, I'm sure most of you FNAF fans know, Scott Cawthon had night terrors of the game. He had night terrors of Bonnie in particular. It's quoted as saying, you know, he didn't really get scared of the other ones, but he got scared of Bonnie. And I think that's fascinating to have the creator get scared of their own creation. To the point where he, like, tried to get out of his room, but realized that he locked the door before he went to bed and was, like, terrified that he was going to die. Like that is that's a serious thing. All right, let's try let's try night six one more time, and that'll that'll probably be it. <laughs> I don't know how many more times I can have Bonnie eat my face. That's how I feel I am with this game. Ah no no! Ooh, that was close. Okay. Hey Foxy, how about you stop singing, dude? Nobody wants to hear your dumbass song, okay? You're fucking in your goddamn cove doing nothing. Stop it. Oh, yeah, I thought I was going to have, thought we were going to have issues with Chica. I mean, the only thing I can do, ah, shit. The only thing I can do is I can't even check the power levels. I can only just play the, play the strat and hope for the best. That's all I can do with this one. Oh my God. Can we just hit 3 a.m. so I can feel better about myself? Oh my God. I just want to get the 3 a.m. That'll be the farthest I get. Okay, let me know when we hit 3 a.m., guys. Let me know when we hit 3 a.m. Ah, oh, we hit 3 a.m. Ah, I checked the fucking camera again. I broke my pattern. Okay. Fuck! I left the light on. Fuck! I left both light on. Okay. That was that wasn't good. This isn't good. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. Nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing happened. We just wasted a lot of fucking power doing that, though. Holy shit, we might make it to 5 a.m. Ah, shit! Okay, 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 this is fine. Oh, damn it, this is not good. This is not good. Oh, all that energy that's being wasted. Okay, he's gone. Okay, camera, camera, lights, lights, camera. Don't you womp womp me! Don't you womp womp me right now! I am doing phenomenal compared to what I thought I would be doing. No, with your it's me bullshit. Get out of here. I don't care. I don't care, Evan. I don't care that it's you, okay? Ah, shit. Oh, God. Okay, we're okay. Stop. Ah, Bonnie, you bitch! Ah! God damn it. God damn it. I'm happy. We made pretty- we made it pretty far. Um... Yeah, definitely womp womp womp. I'm just waiting for Foxy to- mm. Ah, damn, I was so close. Okay, we're gonna try one more time. Poor Mike. You guys like the name tag I made, though? I'm pretty excited about it. I designed a little name tag for Mike. I'm pretty proud of it. Proud of it. Couldn't you have still went on, on cams? I could have to drain the power, I suppose. Um... But I think once the power died, I think my camera would have lowered and it may have jump scared me. I wasn't sure, so I just left it. Usually when that happens, I just let it go. Uh, next time we'll try it though, Roro. Uh, we'll try to, to see if I can just let the, the electricity die out. I don't know. We got to 5 a.m. We were fucking...
can you were fucking close, man. I needed to stop stop Freddy too, because Freddy I heard Freddy laughing already. Is anybody else just immune to the jump scares now? I feel like I don't even care about the jump scares as much anymore. And that's what scared this game. That's what made me so scared of this game is I hate jump scares. Like nobody's business. Jump scares are the absolute freaking worst for me. Hate jump scares. Ah shit. Okay. Stop. Still there. Shit. 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 Okay. We are not doing well here, guys. Energy wise, we are not doing well. Ah! So how can I when frickin' Chica keeps coming at me like that? Freddy doesn't kill me. Fuck you! <laughs> okay, if I didn't double check that light, like, check it twice, we would have had issues. That would have been a problem. Oh god, oh god, we are really close. Oh, it's 5 a.m. Ah, fuck off! Keep the power on as much as we can, guys. Oh my god. Oh, this is so close. We are gonna be cutting it really fucking close. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Oh! That was close. Okay, we're, we're, we're kind of fucked. We're kind of fucked. Oh, come on, five, come on, six o'clock, come on, six o'clock. Come on, six o'clock. Come on, six o'clock! Stay there, Freddy! Just stay there! Stay there! Keep singing for me! Fuck, we missed it. God damn it, we had it! We were so close! Come on, we were so close, guys! Oh, we just- we were at, like, 5.58 out of six o'clock. We were so close. Okay, we're gonna have to at least go one more time now. All right, let's get the jitters out, guys. God, we were so close. Okay, we got it this time. Totally got it this time. This is it, we got this. You guys ready? Let's do this. I think I, I feel like I owe you guys a, a win on night six because of how long you guys have been sticking it out with me today. Ah, shit, Bonnie. Woo, that got me. All right, you win, game. That one actually got me. All right, that one got me a little bit. He is still there. Freddy is still on stage. Chica is nowhere to be seen. I didn't check the cove. Ah, oh, shit, Bonnie. Okay. Whew. Okay, that one got me a little bit. That one got me a little bit. Okay, he's still there. Still there. I think Chica's in the kitchen. Shit, don't open that door. Woo, I almost opened the door when he was still there. Ah, oh, God. I broke it. I broke it. I broke the sequence. I broke the pattern. Broke it all down. Messed it up. Spoiled it. Okay. This is serious stuff here. Serious stuff. Serious stuff here. Serious kids game stuff. So when I told, um, my, a friend of mine, so here's a true story. A friend of mine's a teacher. And she came to me and said, hey, do you know anything about this Five Nights at Freddy's game? I was like, yeah, how do you know about Five Nights at Freddy's? And he goes, she goes, oh, all my students play it. And I'm like, your students play Five Nights at Freddy's. And she goes, yeah, why? I'm like, all right, honey, let's sit down and let me tell you a little story about Five Nights at Freddy's. And I told her the lore about like the kids getting stuffed into suits and stuff. Um, and uh, she was like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's what your kids are playing. So your kids, that's what they're, that's what they're experiencing is that story. And she was just like, that is awful. I'm like, yeah. So this was right when the first game came out. I didn't check Sika's side. God damn it. I knew I didn't check Sika's side. God damn it. Oh, I'm so mad. As soon as I lifted it again, I was like, I didn't check Sika's side. As so oh my god, as soon, as soon as, like, I put that thing back up, I was like, I didn't check Chica, and I knew it was coming. Ugh. 
I broke my pattern. I broke my pattern like this much. I would have got, I think I would have won that one. We were, we would have had to get lucky with, with Freddy at the end, but I think we would have gotten it. I think we would have gotten it. All right, let's try this one more time. I know I said that like four times ago, but let's try this one more time. <laughs> like just turn off the fan. Wouldn't you rather be hot than dead? Like, I'm just saying, turn off the fucking fan, right? Those lights are going to be the death of me. Fuck you, Bonnie! <laughs> Shit, I didn't check Cove. When Freddy's not on that stage, then I'm like, fuck. Shit! Shit! You guys hear Bonnie back there? And I had Chica on me. God damn. Yes, we're on night six. So we beat all five nights. We're going overtime for that sweet, sweet 50 cent additional check. Um, we'll do 120.50 dollar check. So let's get that overtime. Uh, we were this close to finish to beating it. Um, and then I screwed up. Well, honestly, yeah, I mean, I screwed up. Bottom line. I didn't check fucking Chica out. All right, let's do this. All right, six night, let's do this. That sweet, sweet overtime. Um, but yeah, if you guys like Five Nights at Freddy's lore and want to make a comment, ask questions, see what other people think about it. Ah, Bonnie, you bitch. Okay. And Chica. Open the door. Come on, Mike. Focus, buddy. Fuck you. Bonnie, get out of that window. Bonnie, get out of that window. <laughs> but we know we're gonna die. Don't with that. It's me, Evan. If that is your name. And it's not gonna be good. Fuck, Bonnie, no! He's still there. Fuck, 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 fuck! God damn it. We're fucked. We are gonna run out of power. Well, we did what we could. Did what we could. We are gonna either get lucky or this is gonna be terrible. Oh god. Is the crochet hat thing like a real hat? Yes it is. I send you a real crochet hat, Fantasia. Keep singing. Come on. Give me the Yes! Bring it A, we got it! Did it! Did it! Oh my god! I know you think that it, I know that you think that I just went like muted, but no, I am that excited right now. Guys, nice. did it, he got it. I'm so excited right now. <laughs> that 50 cents was totally worth it. Totally worth it. Holy, Christ on a cracker. Jesus. <laughs> I've never freaked out like that in winning a game before. I've never lost my shit like that before. Yeah. I had to throw something. That's how excited I was. Oh, God. Hi, Jane. Your face was epic after finishing it. <laughs> Thanks, Corex. So... Why this is such a big deal for me and me finishing this this game is a big deal is because I am a scaredy cat. I am a little bitch when it comes to this game. I love the lore. I love the story of this game. This The game series, not this game in particular. This game in particular has a terrible story and I, I, it made me cry the first time I read it. But 
The lore as a whole for this game is amazing. So I always wanted to play it, but always chicken the fuck out because I'm a scaredy cat. So that we beat not only all five knights, but the sixth knight is fucking amazing.